الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان سيدنا ونبينا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا ومطاعنا محمد عبده ورسوله اما بعد فقد قال الله تعالى في القران المجيد والفرقان الحميد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ان الذين قالوا ربنا الله ثم استقاموا تتنزل عليهم الملائكه الا تخافوا ولا تحزنوا وابشروا بالجنه التي كنتم توعدون نحن اولياؤكم في الحياه الدنيا وفي الاخره ولكم فيها ما تشتهي انفسكم ولكم فيها ما تدعون نزلا من غفور رحيم صدق الله العظيم وعن ابي سفيان الثقفي عن ابي عن عن ابي رضي الله تعالى عنه ان رجلا سال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم مدني بالاسلام بامر لا اسال عنه احدا بعدك فقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قل امنت بالله ثم استقم او كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم respected ulama e kiram elders and beloved brothers in islam we have just passed through the season of hajj and throughout this week that has passed we would have heard of many of the hujjaj having returned we would have heard of them regaling of experiences that they experienced we find that in fact this is a very blessed and honored group in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in conformance with the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wherein he said that the haji and the one who has gone for umrah and the one who goes out in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he said wafdullah this is the delegation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whenever they will call out to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whenever they will make dua to allah taala allah taala will accept their dua and rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam the dua of his is also mentioned where he used to say allahumma ighfir lil haj wa liman istaghfara lahu al haj that allah forgive the haji and those on whose behalf the haji will ask for forgiveness forgive them also like the poet says ala kull zuwar dar al habib حنيا لكم بالجنان الخلود افيض علينا من الماء فيضا فنحن ورود وانت فنحن عطاش وانتم ورود the listen say to those who have visited the home of the habib of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that that water and that beauty and that magnificence and that blessings from the cup of which you have drunk from let us also drink from the same cup give us some of that water also because we are thirsty and you have drunk to your full so indeed we find it is a directive of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam that the returning hujjaj we should ask them to make dua in maghfirat on our behalf the question that should come in front of every one of us not only the hajis that have returned but the rest of the ummah of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam because we find that this amal of hajj It's such a comprehensive and beautiful amal that each year not only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showers his blessings on the hajis but in that same period of time it is a season of the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we have heard the first 10 days of zil hijjah how much of reward Allah taala is giving one is the haji who has proceeded for the journey and the other are those that pass during the first 9 days of zil hijjah for them ya'dilu siyam kull yawm minha bi siyam sana for each day of fast allah taala is giving them a reward of fasting for one year so that just as the hajis are seeking allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the rest of the muslim ummah those who are unable to proceed for hajj for whatever reason it may have been they also can seek the mercy and the forgiveness of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
The point, my respected brothers, what we need to understand and appreciate, whether it is Ramadan, whether it is Hajj, whichever portion of the year it is, whether it is Ashura, which is coming shortly, or whether it is shab barat or whether it is shab qadr the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and abstention from gunas is not something that is seasonal. It's not something that we do on occasion. There isn't highs and lows in the life of a mu'min. There isn't a period where a mu'min exerts himself and thereafter he relaxes. These seasons of Allah Ta'ala's forgiveness which are given to us are an excuse to revitalize ourselves so that we bring our entire life on Allah's obedience. Ulama say, Ad-dunya kulluha shahru siyam al-muttaqeen wa'idu fitrihim yawma liqa'i rabbihim They say the whole life of this world, the whole life in this world is like the month of fasting. And iftar of the roza of a mu'min takes place when he meets Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not in this world that sometimes he worships Allah ta'ala or he goes for hajj. Thereafter he exerts himself and after he comes back from hajj he reverts back to the lifestyle he was living before that. Abu Nazra narrates, Arba'un man kunna fihi falam yazdad bihinna khayra. فَذَٰلِكَ آيَةٌ أَنَّهُ لَمْ يَتَقَبَّلُ اللَّهُ مِنْهُ عَمَلَهُ ذَٰلِكَ He said four blessings of Allah Ta'ala, four things which Allah Ta'ala allows a mu'min to experience. And after experiencing this, no change comes in his life. He doesn't go closer to Allah Ta'ala. He doesn't bring his life on deen. Then this is a sign that Allah Ta'ala has not accepted this from him. The first thing he mentions, he says, "Man ghazafi sabilillah." That person who went out in the path of Allah Taala, falam yazdat khaira, and he's going out in the path of Allah Taala. He's striving in the path of Allah. Did not bring a change in his life after he returned. Fadalika ayatun annahu lam yataqabbalu Allahu minhu. This is a sign that Allah did not accept his amal from him. Man sama shahr Ramadan, falam yazdat khaira. Fadalika ayatun annahu lam yataqabbalu Allahu minhu. That person who fasted in the month of Ramadan, the month of Maghfirat, the month of forgiveness, the month when the shayateen were tied up, the month when the doors of Jannat were opened up, and after fasting Ramadan, the Hilal of Eid got sighted and he reverted back to his original lifestyle, then this is a sign that his fasting of Ramadan was not accepted. Man hajja fardan, falam yazdad khaira, that person who went for his fard hajj, that person who was blessed by this beautiful journey, by being able to experience Makkah and Medina, by being able to experience the Baytullah, by being able to stand on the Mina, on Mina and Arafat. In fact, as the Shaykh Rahmatullah Ali describes this entire journey of Hajj as a reminder for us of the life of a mu'min in this world. The Haji dons his ihram to proceed for this journey. In the same way, every mu'min, when he recites the kalima, he dons the ihram. The ihram. What ihram? Ihram that he is going to stay away from that which Allah has prohibited. He's going to stay away from that which displeases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the life of a mu'min in this world, this entire life, this entire life is equated to the journey of the haji towards the baytullah. Likewise, first nine days of Zilhijjah, a person fasts. The life of a mu'min in this world, those who haven't proceeded for hajj, is equated to a fast. Fasting from what? Fasting from the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fasting from those things which will ang- anger Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like the Salaf al-Salihin used to say, Sumit dunya kullaha. Your entire life in this world is a fast. وَلْيَكُنْ فِتْرُكَ maut, The iftar of that roza. You will open your fast at the time of death. وَقَدْ سُمْتُ عَنْ لَذَّاتِ دَهْرِي كُلِّهَا وَيَوْمَ لِقَاكُمْ فَذَاكَ فِتْرُ سِيَامِي How beautifully the poet says, he says, I fasted in this dunya from my lazat, from my desires. My whole life was one fast. وَيَوْمَ لِقَاكُمْ And the day when I will meet you, my Allah, the day when I will become your guest, the day when I will meet you, that is the day of my iftar. That is the day when a mu'min relaxes. Before that, a mu'min does not relax. There isn't a period of highs and lows in the life of a mu'min. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَ اللَّهِ إِنَّ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَ اللَّهِ Allah says, verily, 
Those who say our Rabb is Allah, those who say our Rabb is Allah, those who have handed themselves over to Allah, brought iman on the greatness and the oneness of Allah, thumma staqamu. Just, just to bring iman is not sufficient. The condition of istiqamat. Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu stood on the member of Masjid al-Nabawi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he read this verse of the Qur'an إِنَّ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَ اللَّهِ ثُمَّ اسْتَقَامُوا and then he explained what is istiqamat what does it mean that a person brings istiqamat on the fact that Allah is his Rabb he said وَاللَّهِ وَاللَّهِ بِطَاعَتِهِ وَلَمْ يَرُوغُ رَوْغَانُ الثَّعَالِبِ that this person is not cunning like a fox. That in seasons he will worship Allah and then in seasons he will stop worshipping Allah. When it suits him and it is in conformance to his desire or there is an environment, then he will strive in ibadat. And once that period passes, thereafter he takes his foot off the accelerator. He says, Allah's qasam, istiqamat is that this person is not cunning like a fox but his entire life is in the obedience of Allah. This life in this world is like a fast. We have to fast from the disobedience of Allah. And the iftar or the relaxation period of a mu'min is the day when he will meet Allah. On the day when the announcement will be made, Kulu washrabu hani'am bima aslaftum fil ayamil khaliya. Eat now, enjoy yourself. In the world you underwent difficulty. In the world you abstain from that which I prohibited. Now enjoy yourself. The haji ties the ihram. Ihram from the disobedience of Allah. His entire journey culminates when he arrives on the plains of Arafat, which is equated to the day when he will meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those in this world, those in this world who will not fast from the disobedience of Allah ta'ala, then on the day of enjoyment, they will be deprived of that enjoyment. Beautifully understand it from the example, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إن الله تعالى لا يوحي إلى شجرة الجنة أن اسمعي عبادي الذين شغلوا أنفسهم من المعازف والمذامير بذكري فتسمعهم بأصوات ما سمع الخلائق مثلها. That person who stayed awake, stayed away, fasted from music in this world. That person who stayed away from music and musical instruments. Allah's Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, once he enters into Jannat, Allah ta'ala will command the trees of Jannat, that those slaves of slaves of mine, who in the dunya engaged in my zikr, and did not get involved in music and musical instruments, in return for that, start playing a music for them. Such a music that no one in the entire creation has ever heard the like thereof. Ulama say, the one who in this world will engage in music, he will be deprived of the music of Jannat. The one who in this world, the males of this world who will wear silk, will be deprived of the silk of Jannat. Those in this world who will drink sharab and liquor, will be deprived of the beautiful wine of Jannat. This life in this world is like a fast. We have to fast from the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. مَا مِنْ عَبْدٍ يَدْخُلُ الْجَنَّةِ إِلَّا وَيَجْلِسَانِ عِنْدَ رَأْسِهِ وَعِنْدَ رِجْلِهِ سِنْتَانِ مِنَ الْحُورِ الْعِينِ تُغَنِّيَانِهِ بِأَحْسَنِ صَوْتٍ مَا سَمِعَ الْخَلَائِقُ مِثْلَهَا O كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم He said, when a person stayed away from music in this world, when he enters into Jannat, every mu'min, every ummati of mine who stayed away from music, when he enters into Jannat, two whores will sit at his head and sit at his feet and they will start singing for him. They will sing for him in such a beautiful voice that the entire creation has never heard the like thereof. If we look in the lives of the Salaf Salihin, if we look in the lives of those who had pleased Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one message comes across clearly, my respected brothers. And this message the returning hajis have to take. And the rest of the ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam that has experienced the season of hajj, that we have experienced the season of Allah's blessing. The masjids were filled a little bit more. 
now we have to make istiqamat. We have to bring about a change in our lives. By bringing about a change that is a sign of acceptance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَ اللَّهِ ثُمَّ اسْتَقَامُوا Thereafter they had istiqamat. One sahabi came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya Rasulullah, murni bi amrin fil islam. La as'alhu anhu ahadan ba'dak. O Nabi of Allah, tell me something. Tell me something in Islam which is so concise that after this I do not have to ask you anything else. In one statement, sum up for me the road to salvation, the road to victory. What is Islam? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to him, Qul amantu billah, thumma staqim. Say I believe in Allah and thereafter bring istiqamat, bring perseverance, bring your life onto this declaration of Iman of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sahaba of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam were those individuals in this dunya, they were given the basharat of jannat. In this dunya, they were guaranteed jannat by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yet, they never became complacent. They never took their foot off the accelerator in contemporary terms. Understand it like that. Amr bin As radiallahu ta'ala anhu, two incidents I'm going to mention. To make us understand that right up till the last point, never mind what glad tidings they received from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they never let up, they continued persevering in amal. Ahmad bin As radiallahu ta'ala anhuma. He's lying on his deathbed, crying bitterly. A lot of people have come to visit him, he's not even looking at them. He's looking at the wall and crying. His son is aggrieved, Abdullah bin Amr, to see his father in this condition. So to console his father, he's saying, Amma basharaka Rasulullah bikada, Amma basharaka Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam bikada. Didn't Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam give you this glad tiding, and this glad tiding, and this glad tiding? Why are you worried like this? He looked up after a little while, and then he said, My life can be divided into three phases. The first phase of my life was that phase of kufr. That phase when on the surface of this earth there was no one more hated to me than Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If I died in that phase, Jahannam was guaranteed for me. Thereafter, Allah blessed me with Islam and I came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and I said, Ubsut yadak, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, stretch out your hand, li ubayak, I want to make bayat of Islam on your hands. He says, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stretched out his hand, فَقَبَضْتُ yadi, I pulled my hand back. So he said to me, مَا لَكَ يَا Amar, O oh, Amar, what is wrong? He said, إِنِّي أُرِيدُ أَنْ أَشْتَرِتْ O oh, Nabi of Allah, I want to make condition. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, تَشْتَرِتُ مَادَا What condition do you want to make? He says, أَنْ يُخْفَرَ لِي That Allah must forgive me. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, O oh, Amar, don't you know that the moment a person accepts Islam, Islam wipes away all his previous sins. Hijrat in the path of Allah wipes away all the previous sins. And Hajj wipes away all the previous sins. So he says, I stretched out my hand and I took bayat in the hands of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And in that phase of my life, no one on the surface of this earth was more beloved to me than Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Despite my love, despite my closeness, despite that I was his companion, if you asked me to describe Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I would not be able to. Because my awe, the awe and the dignity which he held in my heart was such that I never looked once directly in his eyes. That level of submission and that level of respect for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, if I died in that phase, I hope that Allah would have made me a jannati. Thereafter, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed away. Islam spread far and wide. We became wealthy, we became governors, we became rulers. Now I don't know what my hashir is going to be by Allah. Amr was a haji. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Hajj wipes away your previous sins. He did not become complacent. He had accepted Islam. That also, guarantee of previous sins were given. Still he was not complacent. Basharat upon Basharat. Glad tiding upon glad tiding. Yet, this is the condition of the Sahabi at the time of his death. 
that again he looks at the wall and he starts crying, Allahumma amartana fa'asayna wa nahaytana famantahayna wa la yassa'una illa afuka ya arhamar rahimeen. He said, Oh Allah, you ordered us and we disobeyed you. You prohibited us and we did not stay away from haram. Nothing besides your mercy we have hope upon. O oh, the most merciful of all those who show mercy. Then he caught hold of his neck and he looked up towards the heaven. Allahumma la qawiyun fa'antasir wa la bariyun fa'atadir wa la mustankirun bal mustaghfir la ilaha illa ant la ilaha illa ant He says, oh Allah, I am not powerful that I can op- oppose you. I am not innocent that I can give any excuse to you. I am declaring I am guilty. All I am doing is asking for your forgiveness and saying the kalima over and over again with the tears falling from his eyes. Ahmad bin As radiallahu ta'ala who passed away from this world. Right up till the last point, there was never a sense of complacence. What greater example can we give than the demise of that sahabi? It is a portion of the year towards the end of Zil Hijjah. It was round about the 26th of Zil Hijjah that Sayyidina Umar bin Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu the dagger was pierced into his stomach and a few days later at the end of the Islamic year Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu passed away. Umar was that personality that during his Khilafat 2,400,000 square miles of territory had come into Islam. Umar was that personality that once Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam walks into Masjid al-Nabawi, on his right hand is Abu Bakr, on his left hand is Umar. He says that I have two ministers in the skies. They are Jibrail and Mikail. And I have two ministers and advisors on this earth. And that is Abu Bakr and Umar. Once he grabs hold of Abu Bakr in the right hand, Umar in the left hand, and he says, Hakada nuhsharu yawm al qiyamah In exactly this situation, Allah will raise us up on the day of judgment. One day, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is talking to Umar, and he says, Oh Umar, what will be your situation when you are four feet in the ground, and that qabr is two feet wide, and all of a sudden munkar and nakir come to you? Umar says, Oh Nabi of Allah, who is this munkar and nakir? The Bishallah Islam says they are the questioners of the grave. They are the test of the grave. They will dig up the grave with their claws and they will come to you. Their voices will sound like the clap of thunder. Their eyes will send out bolts of lightning. In their hands will be a hammer which is so huge that if all the people of Mina had to try to lift that hammer up, they would not be able to lift it up. Yet in the hands of those angels, that hammer will be as light as the stick, this asa is in my hands. If you fail to answer their questions, or you hesitate with their questions, they will strike you with this hammer. Each blow will render you into ashes. Umar says, O Nabi of Allah, at that day, will my iman be like it is today? Like I have brought iman upon you today, will I bring iman on you on that day? Will it be the same level? Nabi Islam says, yes. Then Umar fearlessly says, that then, O Nabi of Allah, I have no problem. I have no problem with their questions. This is that Umar, who Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, وَالَّذِي بَعَثَنِي بِالْحَقِّ نَبِيًّا لَقَدْ أَخْبَرَنِي جِبْرِيلِ أَنَّهُمَا يَأْتِيَانِكْ فَيَسْأَلَانِكْ فَتَقُولُ أَنْتَ اللَّهُ رَبِّي فَمَنْ رَبُّكُمَا وَمُحَمَّدُ النَّبِيِّ فَمَنْ نَبِيُّكُمَا وَالْإِسْلَامُ دِينِي فَمَا دِينُكُمَا فَيَقُولَانْ وَعَجَبَا مَا نَدْرِي نَحْنُ أُرْسِلْنَا إِلَيْكَ أَمْ أُرْسِلْتَ إِلَيْنَا Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, By the qasam of that being in whose hands lies my life, Jibreel has come and informed me, O Umar, that when Munkar and Nakir come to you, and put the questions in front of you, you will say to them, Allah is my Rabb, who is your Rabb? Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is my Nabi, who is your Nabi? Islam is my religion, what is your religion? They will say, how strange this is, we don't know whether we were sent to you or you were sent to question us. That level of basharat and glad tidings, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had given him, yet Umar, when death is staring him in the face, 
He says, by the qasam of Allah, لو أن لي ما في الأرض كلها لفتديتهو من هول المتلع. Oh my son, if I own the whole world, if I own the whole world, I am prepared now to give all this as ransom so that Allah saves me from what lies ahead in the qabr. And then he says to his son, ألسق خدي بالأرض, بالأرض, ألسق خدي بالأرض, put my head on the ground. His son is reluctant, he places it on his thigh. He says, no on the ground, he places it on his shin. Omar says, no, put my head on the ground. He finally, he gives, he relents and he places his father's head on the ground. Omar starts rubbing his beard and his cheek on the sand of the ground. This is that Omar. More than two million square miles came into Islam on his hands. The same Omar is lamenting at the time of leaving this world. وَيْلَكَ وَوَيْلَ أُمَّكَ يَا عُمَرْ إِنْ لَمْ يَغْفِرِ اللَّهُ لَكَ O Umar, destruction for you, destruction for your mother, if Allah does not forgive you. Repeatedly saying this, Umar radiallahu ta'ala who leaves this world. The entire life of a mu'min is a test from Allah ta'ala. This journey of hajj is the ihram of this dunya. This journey of hajj is the fast of this dunya. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَ اللَّهِ ثُمَّ اسْتَقَامُوا Those who will persevere, تَتَنَزَّلُ عَلَيْهِمُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ أَلَّا تَخَافُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا وَأَبْشِرُوا بِالْجَنَّةِ الَّتِي كُنْتُمْ تُوَعَدُونَ If the life is spent like this, at the time of the death, the malaika of Allah will come down. The malaika of Allah will come down. أَلَّا تَخَافُوا Do not fear for what lies ahead. وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا Do not grieve over what you have left behind. وَأَبْشِرُوا بِالْجَنَّةِ الَّتِي كُنْتُمْ تُوَعَدُونَ Become happy, for in front of you lies such a jannat which you were promised by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Once Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told his sahaba, مَنْ أَحَبَّ لِقَاءَ اللَّهِ أَحَبَّ اللَّهُ لِقَاءَ The one who loves to meet Allah, Allah loves to meet him. Sahaba said, أَلَيْسَ كُلُّنَا نَكْرَهُ الْمَوْتِ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ O Nabi of Allah, all of us fear death. All of us fear that trial that is lying in front of us. How are we going to look forward to the meeting with Allah? Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, I am not referring to the fear of death, but the one who has pleased Allah, the one who has pleased Allah at the time of his death, تَتَنَزَّلُ عَلَيْهِمُ الْمَلَائِكَ The malaika come down to him and they give him glad tidings. They tell him what lies ahead. They tell him how Allah is happy with him. Bara bin Azib radiallahu anhu's hadith, he said, at the time of the death, the angels of Allah Ta'ala will come to that person who had pleased Allah. It is the last stage of his life. They will say to him, أَيَّتُهَا النَّفْسُ الْحَمِيدَةِ كَانَتْ فِي الْجَسَدِ الْحَمِيدِ أُخْرُجِي أُخْرُجِي وَأَبْشِرِي بِرَوْحٍ وَرَيْحَانٍ وَرَبٍ رَاضٍ عَنْكِ غَيْرِ غَضْبَانٍ O pure nafs, you are in a pure body. Come out now. Come out now. Become happy. The gardens of Jannah are waiting for you. The pleasure of Allah is waiting for you. The bounties of Jannah are waiting for you. وَرَبٍ رَاضٍ عَنْكِ غَيْرِ غَضْبَانٍ And then Allah, who is happy with you, is waiting for you. Abu al-Hazim was asked, How is the coming in front of Allah? He said that person who pleases Allah, when he will meet Allah, it is like a person who was absent from his family for a long time, and his family is waiting for his arrival. The love and warmth with which he is met, that is how he will meet Allah. This is the mot that we have to aspire for. Man ahabba liqa Allah, ahabba Allahu liqa. The one who loves to meet Allah, Allah loves to meet him. That mot, when the malaika of Allah at the time of death will come down and give us the basharat and give us the glad tidings, the hajis that have returned, the life is in front of them, the past is forgiven, the slate is clean now, but the sign of the acceptance of the hajj. The sign of the acceptance of our ibadat in Zil Hijjah is that we have to change our lives. We have to bring istiqamat. We have to bring perseverance. We are not seasonal worshippers of Allah. We are not seasonal people who will come to the masjid on season and stay away from the masjid on season. Put the shaitan box off on on a season and put it off on a season. This is mazak and mockery with Allah. Our whole life is istiqamat. Our whole life is a fast. Our entire life we have tied the ihram. 
the simplest procedure, my respected brothers, is we have to change our environment. This is the reason it is said to us, link yourself with the masjid, the two gush in the week, the daily fikr in the masjid, our weekly shab guzari, three days a month, when the life is linked to the masjid, and the fikr of the masjid, in that is the preservation of our own iman, and our own deen. May Allah give us tawfiq wa akhir da'un alhamdulillah.